This talk is a vision of a possible future for the scientific publication. I will mainly focus on the way we display the information rather than on open science, open data, open access. So this talk is divided in three parts. On the first part, I will briefly discuss the current state of scientific publishing. On the second part, I will give examples of possible improvements on the way we display information in research papers. And on the third part, I will discuss the specific case of equations. I really invite you to follow these slides going to this address or scanning this code because you will have access to all the interactive documents if you go on a website. And if you go on a website, you will be able to scroll down on each slide and maybe have some more information on a given slide. So the current state of publication is that mainly we still have peer-reviewed and subscription-based journals, even if there's, of course, a philosophical transition to gold or green open access. And there's also uh, mostly disorganized or individual initiatives for self-publishing. Self-publishing is when you put your articles on archive, post-publication peer review, or participative writing. So an example of participative writing is the uh, collaborative project Polymath started by Timothy Gowers. So I give you the links here uh, if you want to check this out. And on the way the information is displayed, we still have mainly PDFs and sometimes we have uh, basic web versions. So on this slide, you have a picture on the left of a paper published almost 10 years ago on the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America. And you have on the right the web version you can see of this PDF article if you log into the uh, website of the uh, JASA. So you have the same text, the same images, the same equations, but just you can uh, see them directly on your web browser. So there's um, advantages and drawbacks for using PDF. Uh, the main advantage of PDF is that the layout is fixed, so it should appear exactly the same in any kind of PDF viewers. But it's also the main drawback because the layout is fixed and so you can't adjust the size of a sentence to the size of your screen if you're looking at this uh, paper with your phone, for example. While for web version, you can adjust the size of uh, the pages. So PDF can now embed uh, animated pictures, videos, or audio tracks. I give you a link to an example which was published uh, five years ago in a conference with, which is about computer and human interface. But it was five years ago, and um, for mathematical notations, they can now currently be handled in PDFs and web. So in PDF, of course, it dates back from the work by Donald Knuth, and for the web, I uh, would say it dates back to 10 years ago with uh, libraries such uh, like uh, MathJax. And here is an example of uh, an equation on a website, which is currently displayed. But we can do much more than that, uh, showing uh, equations on the web, and I will show you examples. And you can also find some more examples uh, going to this link, so I don't have too much time to discuss about them, but Distill uh, is probably the first journal. It's in the field of machine learning, but it's probably the first journal who is using lots of capabilities or almost all capabilities offered by web pages. So have a look at this and you will have a, an example of what can be done for a journal. So about the improvements we can uh, add to the way we display information using web technologies. Um, there's uh, multiples of them. Um, I will not show all of them. So for example, for stretch or telescopic text, which shows information on demand, I will just uh, refer you to a video that I've made uh, six years ago. And uh, if you go to uh, three or four minutes, you will have examples of what is uh, stretch uh, text or telescopic text. For the change of notation in documents, I will show you an example in a few slides. And for interactive computations, which uh, illustrate uh, equations rather than focusing on them, I will just show you an example in a second. 
So here is again a web version of the, the same PDF published almost 10 years ago in the uh, Journal of the Acoustical Society of America with my colleague François Xavier Beco. So here is our rewriting of this web version. So it has almost 10 years ago also. And you will find the same text, the same references. They are just uh, close to the text where they are used, but this is another thing. And you have sometimes equations, and for these equations, you have this kind of text in the margin. And here we have examples of these, the numerical values for the frequencies. We are computing frequencies. So we have numerical example of these frequencies. If we have input values, input parameters, which uh, we can change, and this is uh, the main point I would like to discuss. So you can change value if you click on, on them and slide this value. So of course, if you change the thickness of an air gap, you will change the value of the uh, resonance for the cavity of this air gap. And if you change the value of the temperature, you will also change the value of these frequencies because you are changing the value of the uh, speed of sound. Another example is from a paper published uh, this year again in the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America. Uh, but in this example, the, the original paper is here. Uh, okay, so you have the PDF version, you have pictures with graph results, but you can't adapt them to your own results. Rather than if you are using this web version, you can have access to your own uh, measurements and you drag and drop your measurements or you load a sample uh, measurement like this gray one here and you can directly um, use all the derivations, all the uh, computing which are used inside the paper. It's about, uh, I would say, fitting parameters for the red curve to the measurements in gray. Okay, and everything is computed directly in your web browser. So you are using all the information used in this article, but directly for your own measurements if you want to drag and drop them on this graph. When I was um, discussing about these kind of uh, interactive documents four years ago, uh, one question was about uh, how to deal with equations. So of course we can use the uh, old recipes like colorized equations we used on chalkboards. For a web version uh, we can do exactly the same. For example, we can uh, highlight some quantity and it's also a highlight it definition inside the text. Okay? So this is a modern version of this kind of colorized equations. Uh, but we can do uh, more than that. For example, here is an example by Mike Bostock. So if you click on the, this link, you will go directly to his own publication where he shows um, or he write the uh, Lotka Volterra system of equation. So this is the uh, the system of equation where we use uh, emojis to represent the uh, predator and prey uh, system of equation with cats and mice. You can also use uh, signs in in PDF, of course, but you don't have the same freedom. For example, this is a publication made with my uh, colleagues Fabien Cheviot two years ago where we uh, use sign to explain um, here what kind of perforation inside a given uh, pattern we are uh, focusing on or for a given quantity. Another point about the specific case of equations uh, is that we can change uh, notations or conventions of time. For example, here is the expression of what we call the dynamic mass density for a porous material uh, given by Johnson, Koplik and Dashen. And you can switch between a time convention of plus j or minus j omega t. So you might think that it's just uh, switching between, between plus j or minus j, but you can do much more than that. You can also switch between one quantity, for example, when you use the dynamic mass density or another one because some authors or some readers are more used to uh, play with the uh, dynamic tortuosity, which is this parameter. So here it's easy because it's proportional, but some other writers or, or readers may use the uh, permeability, and in this case it's 
proportional to the inverse of the dynamic mass density. And it's really harder for uh, your mind to switch between one quantity and its inverse when you are reading some scientific paper. Another example is to switch between uh, math notations. So here we have uh, the Helmholtz equation here and we can switch between the Nabla notation, so with a Laplacian here, or between the Leibniz uh, notation here in 3D or the Condens notation here also in 3D. And you can switch not just one equation but the whole document uh, between one notation to the other one. So this was uh, my talk. I hope you have uh, questions or comments. You can just uh, send me by email or uh, using my Twitter account if you want. And I hope to uh, see you virtually during the next time. Thank you.